Добро пожаловать в штаб квартире Бинков. Welcome to Binkov's headquarters. This time we ask Germany or France. Who would win a modern day war? Germany has a larger population and is more industrious. Its economy is 50% bigger. Yet, when it comes to military, Germany has been investing less for decades. When it comes to overall land army numbers, some published figures suggest French army is much larger. But each country's armed forces are organized differently. While French land army has many services incorporated in it, German armed forces have those in separate branches. To truly compare the two, one has to find a common denominator. With it, the compared numbers become different. Germany still lags behind a bit, though. And the difference is especially pronounced when paramilitary is compared. Though again, it is hard to directly compare the two. Germany's final number may not be indicative of their maneuver unit strength, as it may include some logistics units designed to aid NATO. French Gendarmerie is in large part a simple police force. National Guard is a new reservist organization, taking up staff from other services, which makes it hard to exactly deduce overall paramilitary numbers. Paramilitary forces in general are poorly trained for warfare, especially offensive ops, and they lack proper equipment. At best, they're useful for controlling territory behind the front lines or for defending urban environments. The two countries share a border which isn't that long. Monitoring it and protecting it with numbers available would be quite easy for both sides, especially this part which follows River Rhine. Its width makes it very hard to bridge with army engineers. Once the existing bridges get destroyed by Germany, large army formations would take days to cross. French armored infantry vehicles are largely designed to be amphibious, so they could respond quickly and cross into Germany. But the whole logistical train of 1000 additional vehicles per brigade could not easily follow suit. German vehicles were designed to stay put and defend against Soviet invasion. Thus they are better armored, heavier, but not amphibious. French army, however, has more active soldiers in maneuver brigades. There are less actual French brigades, but those are much bigger than usual NATO brigades. German army also suffers worse readiness due to inadequate funding for its size. French have similar issues, though not as severe. Initial disposition of army bases is another factor favoring the French. Near the border, French available forces outnumber Germans by 50%. This part of Germany would be quickly invaded, and even though bridges over southern Rhine would be demolished promptly, there would just be not enough German defenders initially present to slow down the French engineers from making pontoon crossings. Once both sides add their reinforcements from other parts of the country, Germany's position would get a little bit better. Their heavier vehicles would fare better locally, especially considering they would be defending. France has an upper hand when it comes to air mobility. Furthermore, German Airborne Brigade is stationed at the border from the start, so it wouldn't add to German force. France has a slight edge in transport helicopters, with an accent on troop transport, as opposed to German accent on heavy equipment haul. French transport airplanes are also more numerous, but the difference isn't significant. Combat aircraft would also enter the fray. The battle for control of the skies would be fought fiercely. Units from these German bases might need to be relocated quickly to avoid being overrun. Cruise missiles would fly on both sides, with rough parity in both numbers and quality. Those missile strikes would initially blunt the French air campaign, but soon thereafter the French air force would come in numbers. They have more combat aircraft and greater portion of their fleet is multi-role, resulting in even more planes available for air combat and ground strikes. The French Meteor missile is only available in small numbers, and its Mica missile is not as capable as German AMRAAM, but French overall numbers trump all that. Furthermore, French pilots fly more than their German counterparts, and the training shortage makes it hard for German Eurofighter units to be properly prepared for air-to-ground missions as well. The French also have an edge in aerial early warning which could come in very handy considering Germany would otherwise have a great advantage defending with their large ground-based radar network. 
the attack, of course, is faced with Defender's SAM network. While French SAMs are more numerous, they're not really a factor in this war. Numerical difference on the ground and in the air would make Germans very unlikely to go on the offensive. Still, German missile defenses would be quite dangerous, and would pretty much guarantee French Air Force sticking to provide support over the front, instead of rushing deep over Germany, risking high losses. Air defense could also be provided by the navies. Germany has less such ships, but as with complete naval balance of force, at the beginning it may have more locally, when it matters. If the French navy is to go on the offensive, it would need to cross a much greater distance. If it went the straightest route through the English Channel, that would make it easier for the German navy to ambush them. With a sizable part of the French navy, including their carrier in Toulon, it would take a long time to set up a large task force. It would take even longer if the more likely route around Britain is taken, avoiding the Channel choke point. French advantage in aircraft carrier and nuclear submarines could then be fully utilized. However, it would come a week or two later. German Navy would use its Kiel Canal to quickly group its navy in one big task force, operating in the North Sea. But the whole of the naval front would be of little relevance to the short term of the conflict. Long term, however, a French naval blockade of commercial shipping could prove costly for German industry. The front would eventually stabilize along this line, as both sides move brunt of their forces there. Germany has some edge and recon assets, which would help it track French forces preparing for attack. The French could count on many more scouting helicopters and greater helicopter-based fire support. It might come in handy when establishing bridgeheads. German edge in destabilizing those bridgeheads would come from aforementioned heavier combat vehicles as well as more numerous and heavier artillery forces. Germany also enjoys some precision edge, stemming from the Excalibur guided rounds and a greater number of their guns being able to use such rounds. The overall size of the front would not stretch much, as even if the French would desire to force further into Germany, German rivers and quite urbanized landscape would make progress very costly. Furthermore, in coming months, Germany could count on somewhat greater numbers of mobilized conscripts, due to its population. German Air Force would get boxed in, and eventually a treaty. French Air Force wouldn't fare much better, due to additional losses supporting the offensive on the ground. German Navy would eventually get forced to retreat, though possibly inflicting higher losses to the enemy, if French Navy would rush in. But it would still be a German loss at that point, with important part of German territory taken and a large part of French army still being alive to defend it. Only trump card Germans could count on is their larger economy. The thing is though, economy cannot provide instant weapons nor instant training. German arms industry itself is quite robust. When it comes to land systems, it is comparable to French. Where it falls behind though, is enough self-sufficiency in aircraft and long-range missile systems. Still, such systems need years to be produced, so what's really applicable in this scenario is only production of smaller systems. Procurement of black market weapons, probably of Soviet heritage, would also be likely, with German industry refurbishing them. But none of that would really help Germany recover its territory within a year. The multi-year war might see some German gains, but in a limited time war, the victory would be all French. Thanks for watching! If you liked my video, subscribe to my channel! And if you really like my videos, you can even support my work via Patreon. Also, check out my website for polls, video suggestions and my store, offering some cool t-shirts, mugs and other stuff. And remember, Binkov may talk about hypothetical wars, but only real peace can bring us all together.